Abby narrates 11 books in the Babysitter's Club series. Mallory narrated 13. It's kind of amazing that Mallory joined the club 76 books before Abby did, but Abby almost got as many books as her. Here are my five favorite Abby books. Number five, welcome to the BSC, Abby. Abby's first book is okay. It's interesting to meet a new member of the Babysitter's Club, and there's a strong attempt to make her narration unique. I thought the strongest part of the book was the serious story about her father. The family hasn't talked about him ever since his death. Abby and Anna find some of Dad's things in the moving boxes. Abby is terrified when she mistakenly believes her mother got into a train accident. It's very dramatic. It prompts all three family members to come together and finally talk about Dad. The other two storylines of the book are not as good. The club helps put on a carnival. This series has dozens of carnival books, so it's boring material that we've seen repeatedly. Even worse, this story is five chapters long. What should have been a three-chapter subplot is actually the longest story of the book. The other story is that Abby has a full-blown asthma attack while playing sports. It's so bad, she's sent to the hospital. Christy worries Abby's asthma will interfere with her ability to babysit. That's a good premise for a story, but there's no follow-up. Everyone ignores Abby's asthma until the end of the book, when Christy suddenly decides it's not a problem anymore. Why not? What drove Christy to that conclusion? We don't know. The conflict just sort of resolves itself without anybody doing anything, and Abby has no more asthma attacks for the rest of the series. Number four, Abby's Lucky Thirteen. In Abby's second book, she and Anna have a bat mitzvah. There's a fair bit of educational material where we learn about Judaism and bat mitzvahs. There's multiple chapters of her relatives showing up and throwing a big party. That drags on for a little too long. The main story is that an unknown student approaches Abby and sells her a helpful study guide for math class. Abby's surprised to learn it's not a study guide, it's a copy of the math test! Abby gets busted for cheating, and she's suspended for three days. She lies to everyone about what happened, and she almost gets away with it until Mom catches her. I thought it was an interesting storyline. It's hard to imagine one of the other narrators having this story. I did think it was a little weird how Abby refuses to identify the student who sold her the test. She probably wouldn't have been suspended if she came clean right at the start. Instead, she keeps his secret, refuses to say who he is. She waits until the test dealer targets Marianne before she turns him in. Number three, Abby's book. As usual for the autobiography series, we get four three-chapter stories taken from different times in Abby's life. The stories are okay although I would have liked a story about Abby developing allergies and asthma. Her decision to become a comedian, or a story with her twin sister. The closest we get to an Anna story is in first grade. None of the teachers and students can tell the twins apart. Why is this a problem for their second year of school, but not their first year? The girls are forced to color coordinate their clothes. They hate the solution, and people still can't tell them apart until they get different haircuts. The second story is Dad's death. Everyone takes it badly, especially Mom. She can barely function. She can't even cook or change clothes. Eventually, the twins confront her, and she kind of gets better. In the third story, the family goes on vacation. Abby complains a lot when her family members aren't spending time together. But she doesn't tell them what's wrong. She expects them to read her mind and automatically know why she's upset. On New Year's Eve, Mom confesses she's been deliberately avoiding all of their old family traditions because they remind her of her dead husband. In the last story, Mom decides to move out of state. She doesn't tell the twins about it until she's already sold the house. That's a really terrible surprise to dump on your 12-year-old daughters without warning. So as you can see, a lot of Abby's autobiography is focused on her mom and the issues that arose after her dad's death. I thought the book was okay overall, but I can understand people who thought it was too heavy and death-centered to be enjoyable.
Number two, Abby and the Notorious Neighbor. This was a fun mystery where Abby's a detective and Christy is her reluctant sidekick. They play off each other really well. The story is taken directly from a famous movie. Hey, if you're gonna plagiarize a story, you might as well plagiarize a good one, right? Abby's stuck at home for weeks, and she spies on the neighbors. She thinks one of them is secretly a criminal she saw on TV. Luckily for her, he's not good at hiding his criminal activities. He keeps evidence where she can see it, he draws attention to himself, and leaves an incriminating photo outside his house. Thanks to Abby and Christy, the culprit is caught and arrested. The subplot for the book was strong, too. It had multiple angles to it, which is not typical for this series. Number one, Abby and the Secret Society. Abby's first mystery is my favorite Abby book. There's a lot going on in this story. There are four different subplots. Carrie Retland leaves fake clues for the babysitters just to mess with them. It's kind of hilarious. Cookie Mason is a jerk to them. The Pike kids get into a fight when they build clubhouses. A biracial boy named Steven struggles with racism and his heritage. The main story is that an evil secret society operated out of a country club years ago. The ringleaders killed a journalist who left behind a series of puzzle clues. The babysitters have to solve the puzzles and get all the evidence before the culprits do. The puzzles are fine. It's fun to try to solve them on your own. The girls get stuck on the last puzzle. They make the dangerous decision of giving the clue to the culprit so he'll lead them to the puzzle solution. This results in a hostage situation, which is so extreme, one of the culprits has a change of heart. It's pretty dramatic. All in all, it was a good mystery. It technically counts as a murder mystery, because they catch a killer. That's pretty unique for the Babysitter's Club mystery series, which usually dealt with less serious crimes. So, those are my five picks for the best Abbey books. These are the Abbey books I enjoyed the most. Thank you very much for watching, everybody. Please like and subscribe to my channel. And if you're interested in Abby, check out the video where I describe the six Abby books I did not like as much as these.